types of redox titrations per magnetometry where the titrations involve KMnO4. So we can say in direct titration KMnO4 will be present in the burette and it is mainly used for the estimation of hydrogen peroxide. There are many other compounds also for which the method can be utilized. Here I have covered only few examples under each type. Next we have serimetry. Seric ammonium sulfate is used in the burette as a titrant. It is used in estimation of paracetamol and ferrous sulfate. Next titrations involving iodine that is iodimetry, iodometry. So, iodimetry is direct titration, iodometry is indirect titration. This is used for estimation of ascorbic acid and the other compounds like sodium sulfide, sodium metabisulfide and copper sulfate can be, can be quantitated using indirect titration. Next, we have bromometry where bromine is used as a titrant for estimation of isoniazid liquefied phenol. Then we have dichrometry which is used for estimation of iron, chromium, oxygen and then we have titrations involving potassium iodate which is used for estimation of potassium iodide. This is KiO3 in the burette which is used for estimation of Ki and weak iodine solutions. So, so these are all the types of redox titrations. Iodimetry and iodometry I have already covered and the videos are available on the channel. Stay tuned for details of serimetry. What are the indicators used in redox titration? These are chemical compounds which exhibit different colors in oxidized and reduced forms. The ideal redox indicator will be the one with an oxidation potential intermediate between that of the solution titrated and that of the titrant means the sample in the conical flask and the titrant in the burette and which exhibits a sharp readily detectable color change. Most redox indicators are dyes the reduced forms of which are colorless. Since these dyes are intensely colored, the indicator can be used at such a low concentration that there is no interference with the system under examination. That means the amount of indicator which is to be added has to be very low. These are some of the examples of indicators internal indicators, external indicators and self indicators. So, ferroin sulphate, diphenylamine, these are internal indicators means which we can add in the sample solution, one or two drops. External indicators are not so commonly used now. Potassium hexacyanoferrate is one of the examples and then we have self indicators to be very specific. Uh, under redox titration, potassium permanganate, iodine solution, cerium sulfate, these all are, they all possess color by their own and the color change can be observed very easily when the oxidation or reduction reaction is taking place in the flask. Starting with seriometry which is nothing but serimetry or seriometric titrations. Cerium sulfate is a powerful oxidizing agent in diluted sulfuric acid. So, this particular compound requires acidic environment which is provided well by sulfuric acid. So, it is a powerful oxidizing agent in diluted sulfuric acid when we make its solution in sulfuric acid. It can exist in plus 4 form and plus 3 form. The CE4 plus 
is intensely colored and it can get reduced to colorless ce3 plus ions okay by loss of one electron so this is basically the uh, reversible uh, half reaction the salt solution of cerium has an intense yellow color so it acts as self indicator in hot solutions okay so here temperature of the solution matters which are not too dilute and thus the end point may be detected without an indicator so here the important point to be noted is end point can be detected without an indicator means the compound itself since it has color it can act as self indicator provided this temperature and the volume is maintained otherwise if these things are not going to be maintained then we need a suitable indicator for these titrations this can be used only in acidic medium why because in neutral or basic solution it gets precipitated as ceric hydroxide ceric ammonium sulfate in sulfuric acid is considerably more stable than standard kmno4 in permanganate this standard kmno4 is used in the burette and this kmno4 solution is also prepared in the acid okay but as compared to this permanganate the solution which we used in cerimetry that is ceric ammonium sulfate in sulfuric acid is more stable means as time passes the reaction tends to remain stable provided sufficient sulfuric acid is present to prevent hydrolysis and precipitation of basic salt this is the simple one electron reaction we have seen just now ce4 plus okay and it is becoming ce3 plus by gaining the electron and this is not the case with permanganate because it can be reduced to any of the several oxidation states the ceric ammonium sulfate solution is also stable in hcl unlike kmno4 means here when i say that ceric ammonium sulfate has to be prepared only in acid and that acid is sulfuric acid then why not hcl yes i can make the ceric ammonium sulfate solution in hcl also no problem but that is not the case with kmno4 kmno4 solution should always be prepared in acidic condition but the acid has to be sulfuric acid and not hcl why because because of some reaction with Uh, between them the chlorine is formed and that may interfere with the sample reaction let us start with standardization of 0.1 molar ceric ammonium sulfate so you can see molecular formula of ceric ammonium sulfate and how the ceric ammonium sulfate is prepared dissolve 65 grams of ceric ammonium sulfate with gentle heat heat is required for its dissolution in mixture of 30 ml of sulfuric acid and 500 ml of water let it cool down filter the solution if turbid dilute to 1000 ml with water so this is the preparation okay preparation we have taken cas we have added sulfuric acid into it and we have heated it then you add next step is addition of water if it is turbid add some more water the solution has to be cooled and if needed it can be filtered also now let us see how the standardization is carried out what is standardization standardization means by using this procedure i have prepared 0.1 molar ceric ammonium sulfate but whether it is really 0.1 molar or not that i am checking 
by standardization with the use of primary standard arsenic oxide okay so arsenic oxide their stated amount is to be taken it should not contain water by its own and thus before using for this experiment we can dry it in hot air oven wash down the inner walls of flask with 25 ml of the sodium hydroxide so i am adding sodium hydroxide here then water mix add 30 ml of dilute sulfuric acid 0.15 ml of osmic acid now what is this osmic acid it is oso4 which is a strong oxidizing agent this is the structure of the osmium tetroxide okay you can see here osmium tetroxide solution since the reaction between this arsenic trioxide and naoh is very slow here the reaction rate can be increased by use of this catalyst osmium tetroxide and indicator which is used is ferroin sulfate solution and start the titration ferric ammonium sulfate solution start the titration until the pink color is changed to a very pale blue adding the titrant slow towards the end point so this is how the standardization of ferric ammonium sulfate is carried out using arsenic trioxide so during this process of reaction between sodium hydroxide and arsenic trioxide sodium arsenite is formed and this sodium arsenite is then converted to arsenet by ceric components of the salt so this was all about standardization of ceric ammonium sulfate the other primary standards which are used for standardization of ceric ammonium sulfate are sodium arsenide potassium ferrocyanide ferrous ammonium sulfate and iron following drugs are quantitatively determined by seriometry method ascorbic acid tablets dried ferrous sulfate paracetamol ferrous fumarate ferrous gluconate and titanium dioxide <coughs> let us see assay of dried ferrous sulfate which is hematinic the ferrous sulfate is weighed then it is added in water okay so basically if we are dissolving the sample in water we can say this is our solvent here then we are adding sulfuric acid okay titrate with 0.1 molar ceric ammonium sulfate using ferroin solution as an indicator so as we have seen earlier ferroin is the commonly used indicator in redox titration specifically the titrations you involving ceric ammonium sulfate until red color disappears and what is the principle here in acidic medium ceric ammonium sulfate oxidizes ferrous sulfate because ceric ammonium sulfate is strong oxidizing agent right so it is causing oxidation of ferrous sulfate to ferric sulfate and it itself is undergoing reduction and this is the factor i hope you all know factor calculation paracetamol which is the analgesic and antipyretic it is also acid by ceric ammonium sulfate so it is to be weighed dissolve in water add sulfuric acid so this is my solvent i am adding acid to maintain the ph boil under a reflux condenser for 1 hour cool and dilute to 100 ml with water then add some more water in the form of ice hydrochloric acid 
and indicator that is ferroin solution and then titrate until a yellow color is produced we should be carrying out here a blank titration blank titration means the titration without sample means all these procedures we will carry out except addition of paracetamol that is blank titration and then calculate the factor the burette reading we can substitute here and the amount of paracetamol in the given sample can be calculated keep watching do subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and let me know your views in the comment section thank you